Are you stuck in the first minor pentatonic box? Do you struggle to learn the other four boxes? Does your pentatonic improvisation sound boring? Do you struggle to connect the boxes? How many times have you heard five eight five seven five seven five seven five eight five eight for the first minor pentatonic box? But what about the other four boxes? You cannot move freely around the whole neck? Then this is for you. I will show you that all you need are two easy shapes and four simple and fast to learn rules. And to make it even more simple, I will use Lego in different sizes, shapes and colors for an even better visualization. And if you stick till the end, you will get one bonus and you are able to play the blue scale. Even if you know the five pentatonic shapes already, I believe this method with Lego will help you progress even faster and make pentatonic improvisation more musical. You can always come back at any time for reference and jump directly to the chapter you need to see again. There will also be a free download link in the description below with a simple PDF file with all the rules and the summary of this video. Rule number one. We only need two shapes. Let me show you on the board what these two shapes look like. So we have the three little Lego bricks and we have two bigger Lego bricks. I call these three bricks the three dwarfs because they are the smaller ones and I call these two yellow bricks the twin towers. So I put them on the board like this. So it goes on the A string Ascending is the next, the second dwarf, and the third dwarf. Directly connected, we have the twin tower, the first one, and the second one on the E string. And because it is the E string, we just copy the E string set up on the lower E string as well. And we have the setup. So these are the three dwarfs and the twin towers. Let me show you on the guitar. So we have the three dwarfs. One, two, three. These are the three dwarfs. And we have the two high towers. These are the two shapes. Rule number two. The root note is always placed at the same spot within these two shapes. And each shape has the root note only once. So as long as we remember where the root note is within these shapes, we are good to go and know where the root note is. So let me demonstrate that on the board. So on the three dwarfs, we have on the second or the middle dwarf, on the higher note, we have the root note. So this is the fretboard going from low to high and we have it on the second one, second, on the higher note is the root note. Then on the twin towers, we have it on the second twin tower on the lower note. So this is always where we have the root notes. And because of the nature of the E string, it's the same. We can simply copy that and put the root note here. So if this looks familiar to you, 
This is the so-called first pentatonic shape, but we are not talking about the pentatonic shapes anymore. We simply talk about the two shapes and we remember where the root note is placed within these two shapes. Let me show you on the fretboard. On the fretboard we have the A note, A minor pentatonic, which is the root, the second twin tower, we simply leave two frets out. Then we have the three dwarfs, two, two, three. And on the second dwarf in the middle position, we have on the higher note, we have the root note. So this is like one. This is the root note. These are the three dwarfs. Root note. And we complete the three dwarfs. Then on the twin tower, it's the second twin tower that has the root note on the lower note. So this is the root note. Complete the shape of the twin tower. So first twin tower, second twin tower, but with the root note on the lower note. So that completes rule number two, placement of the root note within the two shapes. Rule number three. The B string shifts everything half tone or one fret higher. This is due to the strings that are tuned a fourth apart, like E to A or A to D, but from G to B, it is only a major third. Therefore, if the B string is involved, we need to shift whatever is on the B string one fret higher to compensate this major third. So I will show you on the board how this works. So on the board I will demonstrate how this looks like. So we have the three dwarfs which are nicely lined up across the strings because they are all a fourth away. So we see first dwarf, second dwarf, third dwarf, no B string involvement, so therefore a straight line, they are all on the same fret. Now, if we move ahead and say we start from the D string, so we have D string, G string, we will place it here, but as we have the B string involved, we need to shift it by one fret. So it means that we need to shift it like here. And then once we are on the G string, we start on the G string, we shift to the B string, and from the B string to the E string, we simply continue as we would do with the other strings in a straight line. So that's how it works. Let me show you on the fretboard as well, directly on the guitar. So on the guitar we have like the situation we have the three dwarfs, we have no involvement of the B string, everything is fine, we keep it on the same fret. So now on the next one we start on the D string over to the G string and voila the B string we have to shift it one fret so this applies the B string rule so we start shift if we start on the G string we hit the B string we shift and we continue in a straight line with the E string. Then with the twin tower I show you how it works with the twin towers. So the twin towers we have the same situation if we place the twin towers randomly on the board. We go here, no involvement of the B string, 
straight line. So we can continue. So if we start from the D string, we have the two twin towers, no involvement of the B string, straight line on the same fret. If we move one more from the G string, we start from the G string. Oops, we hit the B string. Okay, no problem. We just shift it. And then when we are on the B string, we just simply continue with a straight line. No problem. Let me demonstrate this on the guitar. We have the situation twin tower, second twin tower, no involvement of the B string, it's on the same fret. Then from the D string, the same situation, we have the first twin tower, the second twin tower, still no involvement of the B string, so everything is fine, one straight line or on the same fret, no shifting necessary. Now when we start from the G string, G string first, twin tower, second twin tower hits the B string, we shift it, and if we start from the B string, we have no shift to do, everything stays the same, same frets, no shifting necessary. So that concludes rule number three, B string rule. Rule number four. With rule number four, it's all about connecting the shapes. There are several ways how we can connect the two shapes. The first way, as we know where the root note is within the two shapes, it is easy to connect the shapes across the neck by the root note. Let me demonstrate this on the Lego board. So we have, for example, the first set of dwarfs. And as we know from rule number two, we know exactly where the root note is. Second dwarf higher note, the root note. Now we already know that the second twin tower on the lower note also contains the root note. So this is where we can connect the twin tower set up and as, as it is the second twin tower that has the root note, we simply put the first twin tower in front of it. So that's how we connect these two shapes via the root note. So I can also demonstrate this on the guitar. On the guitar we have like the three dwarfs, and we know that the middle dwarf on the high note contains the root note. So this is root note. And on the twin tower, we have the second twin tower that contains the root note. And we just put the first twin tower in front of it root note. So that's how we connect the two shapes via the root note. So then the second way how we can connect the shapes across the fretboard on from the lower string up to the higher string is that the three dwarfs connect directly to the twin towers, but the twin towers need to be pushed back one fret, unless there is the B string, remember? 
So let me show this on the Lego board. So on the Lego board, you have, for example, the three dwarfs, which you place here. Then the twin tower goes back one thread. Remember, one thread. So then the next one would be here, but it's the B string. We need to shift it back here. And with the dwarfs, we simply continue the same way in a straight line from the twin tower. So with the placement of the two shapes, we can connect them across the fretboard from lower string to up the, the higher string. On the Lego board, we place the three dwarfs in a straight line on the same fret, on the same fret. There is no involvement of the B string and we place the root note just for the sake of learning where the root note is. Then we take the twin towers. The twin towers we have just discussed is back one fret. And normally it would be connected directly with the second twin tower. But as the B string is involved, we have to shift it higher one fret. Then we place the root note again on the second twin tower. And we can connect the next set of dwarfs directly to the twin tower. So this is one, two, three. Starting, for example, from the A string, we have the first dwarf, the second dwarf, still no involvement of the B string, one straight line on the same fret. We mark the root note just for the sake of learning where the root note is. And then we said that the twin tower would be connected one fret back. But as this is the B string involvement, we have to slide it one fret higher. And the second twin tower is just connected in a straight line. We mark the root note again, just for the sake of it. And we copy the E string, same position with the same root node placement. Okay, let me show this on the fretboard. Starting on the A string, we do the three dwarfs. We connect the next set of twin towers, which would be one fret back, but as it's the B string, we have to go one fret higher. And we have these two shapes connected. So, root note. Twin towers. If we start from the E string, Then the next set would be the twin tower, as we said, it's going back. The next twin tower would be here, but B string involvement. And then the first part of the three dwarfs. So to complete three dwarfs, twin tower. 
That's how we connect them. Another way how we can connect these shapes is by connecting the dwarfs with the next set of dwarfs or one set of twin towers with the next set of twin towers. Let's start with the three dwarfs. So let me show you on the Lego board and then on the fretboard. So on the Lego board, we can start with the three dwarfs. We mark the root node. And then the next set of dwarfs is simply by sliding down or sliding higher on the fretboard and place the next set of dwarfs. Be careful about the B string. We mark the root node to make it a routine. And then we can connect the next set of dwarfs like this. So one, two, also the second one is going to be placed here. And then this marks the third dwarf. So one, two, three. And as it's the middle one, on the middle one we have the root node. Then as this was the third, we connect it like this. We place the next one and the next one. No B string involvement, placement of the root node. And then on the third one, we can connect the next set. You guessed it already. This would be like this, but B string involvement. And placement of the root node. And then the next one. This is the first one. The first one goes also on the low E string. And we can start over again. No B string involvement. Placement of the root node. And we see we are at the beginning again. The cycle starts all over again. As long as we are not at the end of the fretboard. Let me demonstrate this on the guitar. So for example, in order to show you, I start with the G note. We have the three dwarfs. I slide down to have the first, second, the third one involves the B string, slide it down. And then I slide down. Uh, the first, the second, it's still the second, and the third one. The third one, slide down. After three dwarfs, slide down. And this one we have the involvement of the B string again. And we are on the G note again. Full cycle. So let me also show you for the Twin Towers. Back to the Lego board. So the Twin Towers we connect like this, go like here. Twin tower on the E string, twin tower on the A string. 
we mark the root node. So then the next one is not like this, but like this. So we connect it one back. Then on the next one, first we mark the root node. And also this one, we connect it on the last thread. But as this is the involvement of the B string, we have to slide it up one thread and we connect it like this. Place the root node, copy it to the lower E string, root node. Then we connect the next set. Place the root, root node. Then connect it the next one. B string involvement, which means Shift down one fret and placement of the root node. And then the next cycle would be exactly the same as the first one. So let me demonstrate this on the guitar neck. So we have the twin tower. The next twin tower we connect at the bottom one thread back on the next string. So we have no B string involvement so far. So the next one we would have like from here one string higher, one thread back. But as this is the B string, we slide it back and we go. So this is the twin tower. So we can go like this is the second twin tower. We start from the E, lower E string again. Then the next twin tower is one string higher, back one fret. And then the next one, the same game. One lower, one back. But then we have the B string involvement. And then the next one is from here. We go one string higher, one thread back. And we are at the G string. Where we have started. So once you are familiar with all these rules, and the two shapes. You can freely walk around the whole guitar neck. It takes a little bit of practice, but as it is simplified compared to learning five shapes and not knowing how to connect them with all the disadvantages of being kept in one shape, I think this is a good method to walk around the whole guitar neck. Before we come to the bonus section, I ask you to hit the like button. I have already plans to explain the other scales and modes with this method. So if you are interested how this Lego learning method journey continues, then also press the subscribe button. Please leave a comment and let me know if this is useful and what I can do to improve your learning experience. So here comes the bonus. Now that we have a minor pentatonic, we only need to add one more note to turn it into the blue scale. This is the so-called blue note. There I have chosen the blue Lego piece. All we need to do is to place it in the middle of the first dwarf and we already have the blue scale. So let me show you on the board where I have laid out the complete system that we have just previously looked at. We see 
the three dwarfs with the root node, we see the twin tower with the root node. We see how they are connected with each other, like the dwarfs are connected with each other. For example here, the three dwarfs, the next three dwarfs, and the next three dwarfs, the next three dwarfs. Always important is to know where the root node is. Also the same goes with the twin towers, how they are connected. Twin towers, one back, twin towers, the B string movement where we have everything to where we have to move everything one thread higher to compensate for this um, fourth step. Okay, so now, as I promised, there is a simple way to turn this into the blue scale. So for this I have chosen of course a blue Lego piece because what we need to add is the blue note. And the blue note is simply placed on the first of the three dwarfs in the middle of the first dwarf. So one, two, three, first dwarf in the middle. So we are looking for the next set of three dwarfs. This is here, one, two, three, the first dwarf in the middle. The next one is this one in the middle and of course on the low E string as well. One, two, three. This is the next one. One, two, three. This is the next one, which is the first one. One, two, three. Then here we have the next one. And now it's complete. So the next one would then be here. Just for a fun fact. But this is how it works. And we can see we have a nice pattern with the B string shift, which is always, otherwise it would go straight through. But now here we have the B string, everything moves one fret higher at the B string. So now this makes the blue scale, and I'll demonstrate that on the neck with an A minor pentatonic A blues. <laughs> And from here we can connect the next three dwarfs with the first dwarf. Root note, root note, first dwarf with the chromatic approach including the blue note to the root to the third dwarf, where we can connect the next dwarf with the blue note, with the root note, and connecting the next simple as that. So this concludes my video how to learn the minor pentatonic scale including the blues scale with the Lego method across the whole neck. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in a future video. Thank you for watching.